Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great, following the three H's of the channel, and all that good stuff. And in this video, something is lurking deep in the swamp in a forested area. Some things happen in rural Sweden. Mount Eleanor has more than some people bargain for, and more. If that sounds like something you're interested in, pull up a stump with me, and let's get into it. Thank you for watching. My mom always told me to stay away from Ouija boards, to never do a seance, and similar things like that. When I was a teenager, I asked her why, and she told me this story. She was 14. She was hanging out with some of her younger cousins. They had decided that they were going to do a seance to try and contact a dead relative. At the beginning, they were all having fun and games, they were scaring each other, trying to psych each other out. And then things took a turn. They all of a sudden felt like somebody was there. They would ask it to do something, and it would do it. Specifically, it happened to a candle. They were expecting the spirit to just put the candle out, but it didn't do that. It instead split the flame into two separate flames, and then three right after that. Obviously, they were pretty taken aback by this. And then suddenly, the lights began to flicker, and one of the cousins started having a seizure. Everybody started freaking out. She ended up getting taken away in an ambulance. My mom said that they were like best friends. She was a super sweet girl. Mom went to visit her in the hospital days later. She was now strapped down to the bed. She stayed there for almost a year in terrible conditions. My mom walks into the room during this time. Her cousin looks at her with eyes that aren't hers and in a deep guttural voice says, what the F do you want? Or something to that extent and called her all sorts of names. Luckily, her cousin did recover. I don't know a lot of details about what was done or what happened, but she made me promise a few months ago that I would never touch a Ouija board or anything like that. She was very serious about it. I told her that I promised, but I didn't have the heart to tell her that in college I had done a Ouija board. Even though nothing happened to me, I'm still not going to touch them because of what happened to my mom. This might give you an idea of how old I am, but in 2003 or something like that, I went to see Cat in the Hat, the Michael Myers version, with my friend and his mom. On our way back, we were getting off the exit ramp. We were surrounded by forest. As soon as we turn into the ramp and head down, we realize that our tire is flat. So we pull over to the side of the ramp and I think, man, I'm like five minutes from my house. But pretty quickly, a friendly person pulls over in a big van and asks if we need some help. He tries to change our tire or something and eventually, a cop shows up too. We're talking to the cop and to the other guy, just having a conversation. He's making sure everybody's fine, that nothing's out of the ordinary, just stuff friendly cops do. But I look behind him, and I see this thing walk out of the tree line, just staring at us. It looks like the outline of a person, but it's like camouflaged this is nothing a hunter would ever wear there's no orange whatsoever it's eight at night in the winter i don't think anybody else noticed him or it or whatever because at some point the outline just turned transparent and went back into the woods and started bounding through the trees 
The really scary thing is that I knew even then that it was weird for him to be there, or it. But after reading some really creepy stories about stuff people see in the woods, or even off of highways, I don't know what to think. What the hell was it? How does something appear as an outline of a person and then just turn transparent? So generally, I don't have a lot of belief in ghosts. I don't really believe in any paranormal stuff either, in general. But what happened this one time now makes me unsure of just what to believe. It was a few years back. I was working at a warehouse for electrical general parts. I was working night shift, so I clock out at about 11 p.m., during the winter in Sweden, so it's very dark outside. I hop into my car and I drive home, which is about 10 minutes from work. I'm not tired at all, since I wake up late, obviously, I work night shift. So there's a few roads before getting to my house, and there's this big asphalt area that's just kind of like a dead space. It's like a turning spot or something like that. At least that's what it is now. I don't know what its original intention was. And there's a light pole in that area. And then I see something coming out of the forest right beside the circulation site. It, it looks like a slender animal. As I get closer, I notice how screwed up this thing looks. It has a super long tail, almost like a monkey, but a snout like a fox. It has no ears. Very short fur, like you can see its skin. Very raggedy looking. I slow down to look at it. All I can think is how this looks like a monkey that's just on all fours, and how skinny it is. Its fingers are black, almost like they've been frostbitten or burnt or something like that. It sees my car, it opens its mouth, and lets out some kind of scream that I can only describe that had a stutter to it, or like it was caught on the letter A. Super short, stuttering screams that were very high pitch. And then it starts twitching and doing something with its head. At this point, I've had enough, and I just drive past it. If it weren't for me living in the middle of nowhere in Sweden, i just disregard this as some sort of screwed up monkey. But there are no monkeys in Sweden. Especially not in the middle of nowhere, out in a forested area, in the middle of the winter. I've only ever seen it the one time. Is there any idea as to what I saw? I've told this before, but here's my story that happened at Mount Eleanor. So I was hiking to Mount Eleanor with a group of six people. We reached the summit as a group. We hang out for a bit, talk about random stuff, talk to other tourists and strangers up there, you know, stuff you do when you're hiking. Now, I'm afraid of heights, so the experience was somewhat uncomfortable for me and I got bored of it pretty quickly. It's super beautiful there, but it unfortunately makes my hands shake and I start sweating every time I look down. One of my friends is a little iffy on heights too and is completely done with the day. We decide to head down together while the rest of the group is gonna follow down later. We happened to think ahead a bit and we took two cars so it worked out. So heading down, we get to an area, it's just past the fog, and somehow we end up in an area that isn't the path, and we are about a hundred feet off the trail. This area of the mountain is large with dirt hills and areas of heavy tree cover off to the side. We realize that we are off trail, 
So we're trying to find the trail back. And while we're doing this, we start hearing a voice. It sounds like a woman's voice yelling, help me. It sounds like it's coming from the forest area to the right. We consider trying to find the source. But before we can do that, the sound kind of morphs and you can't really tell what it is anymore. We both get this absolutely sinister feeling from this. So we just decide to continue toward the trail and then continue down the mountain. The voice seems to kind of follow behind us, always tempting us to go off the trail further, but we never see a source, not even once. We get to this area of the path that is just large boulders that you kinda have to jump down across. The voice, or sound, at this point has evolved into almost an ape-like squawk and we are moving as quickly as possible. At some point, my friend pulls out a hunting knife, which is a pretty stupid thing to do while running down boulders, but I guess he was just as nervous as I was, and we had made pretty good distance while being followed by whatever this was. The sound stops relatively soon, like right after about the time that we got past the boulder field, we meet the switchback in the trees. We cross paths with what I'm assuming was a Boy Scout troop. They weren't really dressed like Boy Scouts, but it's just what I assumed they were. But the rest of the trip was uneventful after that whole thing happened. Something awful happened to me when I was 16. I was living in a very rural area middle of nowhere. To go to my grandparents' house, I had to go all the way down a foresty area with a cliff, some really narrow trails, and various dirt paths on the side, and then follow a river till you get to the fairly large chunk of land that he owns. It's basically a death trap, but me and my friends, when we were young, we were reckless, thinking we were invincible. So of course we do really stupid things, like run through these narrow dirt paths. It took about 30 minutes, sometimes 20 if we were running, to go from the small town where my dad and I lived at the time to get there. And again, this is depending on how fast you go. So my gramps, being super stubborn and old, he refused to leave his land and move into town with dad and me. Now, I had two close friends back then, Tom, who was 18, and who usually instigated whatever stupid thing got us into trouble that week, and Sean, who was the same age as me, and was pretty much the butt of all our pranks. He became a bit of a grump, as you can imagine, and had huge, angry outbursts every now and then. You know, Looking back on the whole situation, I don't think that we were actually that good of friends, but there was no one else to hang out with, so we made do. This story happened a rainy afternoon when Tom and I were watching TV at my place because of the rain. My dad had been working like usual. He was a butcher at this time, and he got home with a big piece of ham for my grandpa. I was supposed to take it to him, but Dad said that I should wait until tomorrow because the rain makes the paths dangerous. Regardless of how mad Grandpa would be about not getting his ham that night, and I thought, well, it's less work for me tonight, so I went along with it. That day, Tom had been particularly a prick towards Sean to the point where I actually had to sit in between them to avoid a full-on fistfight. After a little longer, my dad got shit-faced. This was nothing new to us, though it never happened with my friends here, and it never happened during the week like this. 
so he probably had a particular hard day at work. Us being loud teens, eventually, as you can imagine, made him a little less than happy. He came in yelling. This made everything particularly awkward, and it was a pretty bad outburst, even for him. After a few minutes of silence, with only the TV breaking it up, I get up and I get the ham from the fridge. I ask the guys to come outside with me because I really don't want to sit with this in the house. I explain to them that I'll take the ham to my grandpa and I'll crash there. By this point, the sun is starting to set, but Tom insists that we all go. Sean doesn't want to. He doesn't want to walk the entire way back in the dark, especially that he's a little unfamiliar with the trails. But of course, we're teenagers, so we call him all sorts of names like a sissy and everything else, and we eventually get him to go. So off we go, into the forest. Tom ran into his house to get a flashlight beforehand. It's not dark enough to need it yet, but we are going to need it. I'm carrying the stupid ham, which means I have my hands full, but Tom and Sean are just jumping around the overgrown roots until we reach the cliff area. Then, everything goes downhill, very badly. Needless to say, Tom kept teasing Sean the whole way, and it was starting to get on my nerves even, and it was starting to get dark. I was feeling pretty shitty at this point. The mud was getting annoying. Everything was. Then, Tom does it. He calls Sean over near the edge. He says, Hey, um, what's that down there? Sean is having none of it, and he says he's going back. I would have called BS too, but Tom seemed genuinely concerned. He calls me over too. He says, no, guys, you have to see this. Sean begrudgingly goes, and when he's right next to Tom, he acts like he's going to push him off the cliff and then pulls him back by his shirt. Now, Tom was laughing his ass off. Sean, on the other hand, fell on his ass, coated in mud. He went ballistic. He was throwing punches and kicks at Tom, who was not paying attention and still actually looking at something over the cliff. The laughing stopped once Sean punched Tom in the face. I couldn't do anything but ask them to stop because I was carrying the stupid ham. The brawl didn't last. It was sudden. Our hearts stopped beating for a second. Tom moved, and Sean slipped off the edge of the cliff and down into the forest. The whole scene sent chills down my spine. It still does. I dropped the ham and was about to run to the town to get help. Tom stopped me. He was rambling about how there was no time and that we had to go get to him or he could die. But I knew damn well that he was more scared of the police finding out that his prank led to Sean going over the side of the cliff. Regardless, we both ran down the path as fast as we could, almost tripping more than once. We were screaming for Sean the whole way. But after the initial scream, there was nothing but silence. Once we were down there, we ended up in the very thick part of the forest. This was in the opposite direction from the usual way to my gramps place. Now the thing is, despite living there in the area my whole life, I had never been down in that thick area of the forest. My grandpa was always very serious about never going there. My dad, too. They said it was very dangerous. That there were wild animals and, quote, other things that you should be worried about. And by this point, it was dark. The sun had completely set. Everything was damp. Our only means of navigation 
was the lamp flashlight thing that Tom had carried. But something else was off. The forest itself in this area was quiet, very unlike the path, which always had birds. Even in the rain, there was some noise. Like idiots, though, we ran deeper and deeper, screaming for Sean, as hard as our lungs would let us. Suddenly, we hear it. Here is a very scratchy voice, very grating. I remember Tom taking a breath because he was alive, thinking that maybe he just got really screwed up by the fall. Maybe he broke bones or something and got the wind knocked out of him. I say we ran toward the voice, but Tom ran, and I got stuck by the branches the whole way through. It's impressive how far adrenaline can take you, but we are completely disoriented. We don't really know where we're going. We only heard the voice the one time, and we've already lost the direction. We reached a swampy area in the forest, and that's where we saw it. The mud was up to our ankles and got deeper and deeper as you went, branches reaching off into the murky mush. And like I said, that's when I notice it. I swear I could see something in the trees that some of those things that I thought were weird branches looked like arms. Tom is still calling for Sean, but he eventually goes silent as he's looking down at the mush. Then he turns and runs off in the other direction. I try and ask what's going on. I try to follow him. But then, something yanks me back by my jeans. I swear, I could feel the denim rip. Something had a grip on me. I fall face first into the mud. I do my best to get up to quickly find my footing. And then, covered by the darkness of night, just barely noticeable at a distance, I see a pair of eyes. And what, honestly, honest to God, looks like a mouth giving me a toothy smile right there in the darkness. I couldn't make out anything else. Not a skull. Not even a head. Just eyes and a mouth. I get up and try to run the same direction from where we came from. But then I get tripped up backwards by branches that seem to appear out of nowhere. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I started breathing really heavy, becoming panicked. Then I could see another face, but I thought it couldn't be the same one. From here on, my mind is a bit of a blur. I remember getting up. I remember running. I remember being chased. I remember the only noise I could hear were my own footsteps, my heartbeat, and myself crying. Eventually, I must have reached the river because my grandpa told me that I got to his home late at night. He checked on me and said that I didn't have any severe damage outside of bruises, cuts, and scratches. He told me he locked down the house and didn't sleep a wink, watching over me with his hunting rifle. The next day, I told him everything. He didn't know what it was either, but he went to town and reported it all. Sean was found. He was stuck on the top of a tree in between branches. He had snapped a bunch of bones, but he was alive. Tom was found miles away in a clearing, unconscious, barely alive, full of cuts, bruises, very dehydrated, and apparently when he came to, he just rambled for days about eyes in the darkness, branches coming up from the swamp and tripping him like hands grabbing at him. Needless to say, this put an end to Tom and Sean's friendship, and, to be honest, 
I moved away shortly after this. I'm kind of glad that I'm far away from that place. So, which one of those was your favorite one? Let me know down in the comments. Do you have one of your own? I have an email in the description below that you can send them to if you'd like to. Also in the description is a PayPal and a Patreon if you would like to support the channel that way. And with that, I think I will see you in the next one. Thank you for pulling up a stump. Remember to follow the three H's of the channel. And thank you for watching. See you later.